these lines here were all from the old bathroom. So I'm just going to redirect them to the new bathroom. And I've already started with the hot for the lav. Um, and that's this line here. And it's gonna run over there through that joist and up there where it will stub out in the wall. So now we're gonna do the cold for that, which is bath number two lav. That these stickers, they didn't have a bath number one. It was just master bath and we don't really have a master bath. So we don't, uh, we don't get that choice. Hopefully all of these lines are long enough. If not, I'll have to go get some new one. Well, I don't actually have to get anything. I just have to run a new one. recently heard that the reason why the cold is on the right is because back in the old days people pumped water and you pump with your right hand since most people are right handed and so the cold went on the right and that never changed. Honestly I think this cold line might be a little short but we're gonna see anyway. Well, it looks like we're probably gonna have just enough here. So that's good. We've got these metal straps here, and these little PEX bender slash attaching devices. We run the PEX line through there, and then you kind of just have to force it into place. are in. Now we just need to trim them and uh, cap them off so that we can test it. So the stub out for the toilet is going to go right here. It's six inches off center from the toilet. It goes through a point in the wall, the actual stub out, um, which is eight and a half inches. So we've measured that on this side and it's kind of a strange corner here because we have to nail from the back on this side and from the front on that side. So. the nail in on this side and then we'll go around level it and do the other side and really it doesn't need to be level but when it's that easy you might as well be picky Nails instead of uh, flute screws because they'll actually suck in the metal and warp it and bend out the outside. So I use roofing nails to keep it nice and flush. Um, and then we can just stub this out here. these using these little clips last of the rough plumbing for this upstairs bathroom will be the hot and cold water for 
the shower. Um, so there's the drain. The entire thing, including the drain, is about 55 inches, but up to the drain is 48. So we've got a nice square four by four um, shower. The fixtures are all gonna be on this wall right here. 24 on center is here. So the fixtures should be right about here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the cold here and the hot here. They'll each run up the insides of these joists and stub into the middle. So we've got a little change of plan. This is the center here, and I feel with the amount of um, piping and then the manifolds and everything, I'm just gonna be too close to this to get anything done right. I, and I'll be able to get it done, but it's gonna drive me crazy doing it. Um, so I did a little measuring, and the space between this obviously is not your standard 16 inch on center. It's because I thought I was centering it in the right place, but I wasn't. So I'm gonna move that out to be 16 inches, which will put this stud here and this stud here, which then puts this almost dead center in the middle between the two of them, which is kind of perfect. So I'm gonna cut both of these studs out and put new ones in. the ends of these where the nails are and use them for scraps in other places probably the sport in between these as well as all sorts of places to hang sheetrock in the future so they won't go to waste they'll just lose an inch on either end to finalize our plumbing install the only thing that's left to do for the rough in before it can be inspected is to install the shower valves and that basically finishes off all of the hot and cold water plumbing um, they can test all the fittings make sure nothing's leaking to do that we're looking at our hot and cold inlet here and i've marked on the wall some lines here and these are all going to be different depending on your situation this vertical line is the depth that i need Delta says that two and three quarters inches to the backer from the finished wall. So finished wall is half an inch. So this backer, which will be the support for our valves, goes here. And then the shower that we have in the basement is centered here. But we're using a shower valve and a diverter. So they need to be set at a different height. And I've decided arbitrarily, based on what I like and what looks good, to do 10 inches between the two valves. And you can see these will be the two pieces that will back our valves. And I basically just took the cover plates and centered them where I wanted them, or where I thought I wanted them, and moved them around until I thought that they looked good. Need enough space so that you can actually get a piece of tubing in there between them. Um, you don't want them to be too high, too low, Obviously, I chose centered. Some people do um, left or right, um, but I think a vertical um, design is a little bit neater in my mind, especially considering that the diverter is smaller than the actual valve. And so then, basically what's gonna happen is we will simply screw the valves on, centered, to these two spots and run all the piping, uh, the PEX tubing, to these two points. Um, so we've got, actually this is sideways, we've got hot goes in the left, cold goes in the right, and then there's a point on the top that will connect to the point on the bottom of the diverter, and then left will be to um, either the regular shower head or top, will go to the other one. And what we have here, our plan will be to have a regular shower head here, 
with a handheld wand that comes out of it, as well as a rain head that will be up here. And so you can choose whether you want regular shower head, rain shower head, or both. see I'll center one valve here the diverter here hot comes up from the right left cold comes up from the right and everything goes out through the top all right we've got the supports mounted here and here center points for both of those and then we've got the hole drilled for the top for the rain shower which will go through that joist, through that joist, and then mount right there on that support, and then drop through the sheetrock and be right in the center of the room. The only thing that I have left to do is decide where I want the shower head on this wall to be, and then I'll put a support right about there, and we'll be done with the structural part and then I can go get the fittings that I need to put this all together. finished plumbing system for the shower. And basically we have hot and cold come into this mixing valve here. From here normally if you just wanted a shower you would just have this go straight up to the shower head here but we're gonna have this go to a diverter here so now it's hot and cold they don't make a pink line. Um, Turn this straight up and it will just come out the shower head. Turn it one to the left and it will come out the shower head and the rain shower head. Turn it two to the left and it will come out just the rain shower head. Now we could get a valve that would make this a six port or six different option valve. And that's what this one over here is for. Um, we're gonna actually just cap this off, but for right now, I still need water to this line over here, which is what we use to fill up the drain waste vent system for testing. I have not had that tested yet because I want to do all the plumbing at once, which includes this. So I'm actually going to run this to that line over there as my temporary run. And then once it's tested and good to go, I'll just cut this off here, cap it, and that one will be no longer used. Now as far as this goes, um, there are some ways you could cap that off. You could screw in some sort of brass nut, um, but I like these guys. Um, they're a dollar or two at the store um, and this will just screw right in here like this and then it will protrude through the sheetrock and that allows the sheetrock guys to cut for that really well 
And it also means that when it's time for me to come back, I just unscrew this and run my shower head. So I've already done this one up here and I'm just gonna thread this one on and we'll be all set.